<sighs> Good morning. So where we left off last time, we know where Firewing is, and we know where Vauclair is, they're both in that big mansion at the, from the very beginning, and um, there's some sort of an AI protecting them. I forget what the name of the AI was if we were told it, but some sort of like old school corporate AI, so... Gotta go shut it down. Hmm. Excuse me. Got S class drones finally. Head to Apex. Apex, that's what it is. Okay, let me go talk to our companions real quick. Dietrich, the, the bartender. Oh yeah, any updates on Alexander? No. Okay. Does anyone have anything new to tell us? I guess not. Where the hell's Glory? Oh, there you are. Okay, Glory is dreading this. Oh, okay, she still wants to just continue our conversation that we had last time. Sweet. Question for you, Glory. <laughs> yeah, shouldn't we do something about that Harrow mother trucker? This is tough. Um, so if, hmm. If we free the kids but don't kill Harrow, 
he can just start start over with more kids. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Sure. I think we have to deal with Hero first. We have a van? Sure. Sweet. Take the van here. What are these birds doing? One second. Birds? What naughty birds? Eating plants. Flying around like maniacs. Oh, okay, we have to go down to the sewer for that. For something. Let's see what the heck van they're talking about. Should be a should be a white diamond, right? It's a van. I don't think I've seen any sort of a van. It's so goofy how we walk. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, uh... Maybe that's what the yellow marker was down that ladder. Maybe we keep our secret van down in the basement. if he found Emily. Oh, it looks so good, man. Oh yeah, tell me tell me about your your rescue attempt. Oh. So was she like undercover and you just like fucked this all up? Um, of course they beefed up the security. Don't be such a Debbie Downer. It's 
going on, buddy? <coughs> Great. So this is from As Technology or No, uh Sage your Croup. Oh, okay, Shockwell and Ryder, duh. Oh. Well. Yeah, yikes. I don't like any of these replies, jeez. didn't sound very toxic. I don't want to tell him, like, you needed to be taken down a peg. <laughs> like, all these make me sound like an asshole. <sighs> I mean, I would have gone on the mission with you if I could have. I would have loved to help. And I did kind of, like, keep poking you into you should go find her, so, like, I mean, it's partially my fault. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. It didn't sound like a toxic relationship. I'm just outright lying to you. You're right, I don't. I'm just trying to chew you up. <laughs> Sorry, Blitz. Oh, this sucks. So did we, like, completely screw up that for him? Oh, that makes me sad. Wait, what's this little... What's this little orange thing? Take the van. Okay, so yeah, the van is somewhere down this hallway. Let's save. Oh, I guess I should change this. Because I guess we aren't dealing with that AI just yet. to go bring that smart gun. Give me something to do even if I'm horrible with it. I 
don't know, maybe we should take the lion jumpsuit instead of the prototype combat suit. Like, it's really cool. Plus one to all attributes is pretty cool. But plus one to drone combat. I think. That brings our drone combat to 10, doesn't it? No, it brings it to 9. Okay, 9. 9 is just what we want. Plus 2 AP. Look at that. So that means our drones can do, what, like, five actions each? That might be worth having less armor. We'll see. Even though I look like, uh, weird now. going to the van because I'm, I'm a mechanic and I'm looking at it. Okay, let's get out of here. The drive from the K the KB to the Shanbuk Forest was a long one. For over six hours, you and Glory rode in relative silence with only the sounds of the road for company. Now you find yourself crouching in the woods, watching and waiting. Off in the distance, the rustic exterior of Fierstoa looks curiously warm and inviting, but you know what's waiting inside. The anticipation churns in your guts like a living thing. Eventually, a van pulls out of the compound's driveway and rolls out along a service road before disappearing from view. Glory gives you a nod and begins to scramble forward. Harrow has left the building. It's time for you to make your way inside. Oh, I could have just changed my gear here. Uh, yeah, we're all ready. It's go time. Let's do this. The weathered edifice of Fierstella looms above you, dark and sinister in the chill night air. Despite the horrifying stories that Glory told you about this place, something about it feels strangely comforting. In the back of your mind, insidious voices whisper that you could stay here forever. Do you feel it? The lure of this place? When I was a kid, when I was whole, the pull was irresistible. Um, yeah, we still, still got a job to do. You're going to see some terrible things in this place, Jack. If your Stella exists to prey on the young, and we're going to have to come face with that. Face to face with that. <laughs> Are you sure you're prepared for this? Oh yeah, how young? These aren't going to be like the younglings, are they? Teenagers mostly, 16 through 18. Though there is a rare exception. Uh, well, at least they're not younglings. There was a time when Harrow played with luring younger children here, but he found them to be more trouble than they were worth. The younger the child, the more likely that someone might come looking for them. Better stick with the lost, desperate souls who've already spent years on the street. The cast-offs that nobody cares about. Lord knows there are enough of them out there. So I'll ask you again, are you ready for this? I need an honest answer. Um, yeah, I'm ready. 
Uh, compare notes. What, what do I mean? We take hair out of commission. You were right when you said we couldn't afford to let him live. Even if we completely destroyed this place, it'd be all for nothing if he got away. He'd just start another cult somewhere else. Alright. Well, obviously we should also try to save the cultists. I don't think she's saying that we wouldn't do that. Um, yeah, suggestions. How do we approach this? I don't know what this compound is like. Yeah, we're gonna take out that shrine the Harrow uses as his power focus. We can't touch him while that thing's- is he a shaman? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess he communes with the devil or something, wasn't it? It's how stupid. Um... Yeah, tell me about the shrine. <coughs> it's a lump of rock about as tall as I am, inscribed with runes and encrusted with bone. The shrine's power comes from an entity that Harrow bound to the, into the stone. Something very old and very dangerous. A toxic spirit. In many ways, it's the heart of this place. Okay, so is it just like a run-of-the-mill toxic spirit, or is it the devil? We can't touch Harrow while the shrine's intact. If we try, he'll siphon enough power from it to slaughter us where we stand. But if we confront the shrine and kill the spirit, the astral backlash from its death will cripple him. All we'll have to do is finish him. Kill the spirit, cripple Harrow, finish him. Sure. <sighs> Boy. Oh, they have like a nice little garden set up. What is this? A, a basement, a sketchy looking basement. Like a storm cellar. This couch is not protected by a roof overhang. This couch would be absolutely destroyed. That's a big bear skin. <coughs> Killing Harrow won't just save the kids, it'll save the bears. Okay. Maybe all the children are asleep, right? Looks locked. Let's look at it. A faint red light. Okay, so this must be where the shrine is. How do we get through? The word's like a lock. There must be a key. Back when I helped Harrow run this place, he and I were the only ones allowed in the shrine room. So we look for whoever has taken my place. That's where the key will be. It'll be a girl. Harrow could never take a male as the second. He wouldn't want the competition. And her hair will be fire red. It's sort of an insignia of rank within the cult. Wait, so did you have red hair at one point, Glory? Did you dye your hair? Huh. So we're just gonna bust into these kids' bedrooms and be like, Who has the key? Distant murmuring. Three, maybe four. A man pleading for his life. <coughs> Why not? Mm. 
That's true. That's true. Uh, the problem is, like, I want to kill Harrow so we can end, like, the perpetual cycle of this. But at the same time, like, just killing Harrow isn't going to just free all those brainwashed people. Like, a lot of them will probably still just be evil. I, mean, I don't know. Like, a lot of them probably fully believe in the cause, and the brainwashing has already taken place and worked. Like, they probably, some of them at least, will need to be killed at, at some point. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I can agree, Glory. We have taken down sooner or later, though. Unless they, uh, repent of their ways. Can I listen to this door? Ooh, is this Harrow's chamber? Well, that sucks. An ost ostentatiously large tome sits cradled on the pedestal. The paper is robust and fibrous, and the binding has been expertly stitched. A steel plate running along the book's spine anchors it to the pedestal. Glory stares down at it, frowning. It's Harrow's manifesto. The handcrafted line of bullshit that he feeds to his initiates. We all ate it up with a smile and came away convinced he was a genius. Looks like he's expanded it over the last few years. It's at least twice as thick as it was when I lived here. Okay. Maybe there's something in there we can use? I wouldn't want to hang around long enough to find out. This Harrow's personal library. He used to experiment in here. There were dangerous things in here, Jack. Sick things. I was never allowed in this room without Harrow. Nobody was. He said it was for our safety, and I think he was telling the truth. I feel uneasy being in here. I don't want to stay any longer than we have to. Oh, jeez. It could be important. I'm thinking it could be important, like, that we'll need to know to convince some of the initiates that he's full of shit. I don't know. Uh, sorry, Glory. We're probably going to have to fight some, like, evil demon thing. Alright, I'll watch your back, but try to be quick. Leaf through it. <clears throat> you flip through the early pages of the manifesto, find what looks to be a good place to jump in and start to read. When I first set out on the path to free living, I realized that I'd have to rethink all of my earlier assumptions about life. I'd have to question my own values and beliefs, and I'd need the strength to trust in the answers that came to me. The prospect was daunting, but it was also necessary. The road to true freedom is paved with unanswered questions. After all, you can't learn to be free from a book. The answers won't come from a Bible, an instruction manual, or a code of conduct. If you don't learn that, you'll never break your chains. The path to f true freedom is one that each of us must walk. On his or her own. What makes life worth living? What in life is truly valuable? And what is the dross that can be burned away? Dross? Dross? I don't know. I spent weeks dissecting every aspect of my life to find the answers to these questions. Slowly, agonizingly, I pared down the list to only four items. The four items became the cornerstones of my philosophy and the basis for everything that Fiorstella stands for. Love, the first cornerstone and the most important. Without love, life is bland and meaningless. Without love, we might as well be machines. Love what you do. Love the people around you. But above all, love yourself. 
Self-determination, the second cornerstone. Each of us must be his or her own shepherd. No more gods and no more kings. Your life is your own. Lash out against anyone or anything that tries to treat you like property. An assault on your freedom is an assault on your whole being, and it must be met with an equally ferocious response. Charity, the third cornerstone. A miserly life is an empty life. If each of us is his or her own master, then nobody should live as a serf. By helping others along the path to enlightenment, so do we rich enrich our own lives. Passion, the final cornerstone. Complacency is poison. Be wary of it. Ambition is the key to a fulfilling life. Don't settle for what is. If you do, you abandon what could be. Okay. <coughs> That ominous feeling is growing stronger, Jack. It feels like we're being watched. So I think we got some important information just now. Um, we can tell people, hey, that book that you guys use as like a Bible, it says not to get like, the path to freedom isn't through a book. Also, it says like self-determination, like don't, don't like anyone who treats like property. Isn't that Harrow guy treating like property? Like it seems, seems like we probably have enough information maybe to do some convincing. Maybe we can get out of here with a, hey Ace. Let's leave the journal alone. Let's just get out of here. How are you this morning? We are in a- oh! Did you not get much sleep? We're in a cult base right now. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that you're tired. Yeah, we're trying to stop, um... So we're in here while the cult leader's gone to go, like, bust up his shrine, and we're hoping to not have to kill all of the younglings to do it. Oh, let's see what they have in the fridge. As you open the refrigerator door, a whiff of ammonia sticks in your nostrils. Watery light glints off the door's polished interior. The fridge is stacked full of large plastic bins, all tightly sealed and neatly labeled. It's hard to tell through the opaque plastic, but they appear to be full of meat. The fridge is entirely full of meat? You pop the lid off a container to take a closer look. The first thing that hits you is the smell. The meat in here is beyond rancid. White mold frosts the sides of the bin, and it's all that you can do to keep from gagging. As you rush to put the lid back on, you recognize a familiar shape in the rotten meat. A mangled human hand. Hope this is not Chris's meat. Uh... Yeah, Glory, what the what the hell? You guys cannibals? Oh, okay. Ritual supplies. The adversary prefers them aged. Mmm. Yummy. Harrow teaches all the initiates how to do it. How to harvest the meat. How to store it. How to label it. Nobody likes doing it at first. But you learn. By the end, it doesn't even bother you anymore. Fuck. I warned you you'd see things you didn't want to in here. Yeah, no kidding. It's disgusting. No, not food. Ritual supplies. <laughs> Is 
Sounds like a stash. This is a huge bathroom. I guess there are a lot of people living here. You want to eat the rancid human meat bucket meat? Okay, so this is the dorm room. Movement in the other room. A woman's voice. Calm now, dear. It's probably nothing. No need to worry yourself. We're so far off the beaten track, we don't get a lot of visitors. Oh, is that, is that Marta? But what if it is someone? What if the bad people have found us? What if they followed me here and they've come to... Da da da. Well then, we'll send them away. You're perfectly safe here. You have to believe that. Don't worry, dear heart. Harrow won't let anyone hurt you. Not in here. <laughs> Not in this place. Not ever again. Um, your doggo likes human oh dog meat does dog meat eat human meat is your doggo a pepperoni <laughs> are you certain Marta it is Marta frick Positive. Be calm, all of you. As long as you're here with us, nothing bad will happen to you. Is that your Marta? Okay. We found Marta. If she's still here, she'll be Harrow's number one. My old position. He had his way with all of us, but he was always sweet on Marta. That means that she'll have a key to the shrine room. Jeez. Maybe we can talk to her. Maybe, but not here, and not now. Those kids in there, they'd all die for her. They already love her. That's what she does. We can't risk confronting her in that room. If the situation turns ugly, any one of those kids will happily eat a bullet for her. And that's not what I came here to do. Uh, yeah, it seems like she does probably deserve to get slaughtered by us. Part of me wants to kill her. She's the reason why a lot of kids wound up here, including me. We deal with her later, though. I won't hurt any more kids voluntarily. Hush now, boys, and get some rest. You've got a big day tomorrow. The biggest day of your lives. You get to meet Harrow. I promise you, after you speak with him, you'll see the whole world in a different way. A better way. Oh, all right, Marta. Have a good night. You too, dear heart. All of you. <laughs> the coast is clear. We can handle the initiates. They're just a bunch of scared kids. Without Marta there to egg them on, they won't try anything. Alright. First, let's look in the other doors. A garage. I remember cruising the back alleys of Tubingen, looking for kids in need of help. The bait girls, Marta and the others like her, would offer them money or food or drugs or sex. Whatever it took to get them into the van. Pixie sticks. And once they piled in, Hera and I would be waiting to greet them. I remember so many nights like that. I remember how much I used to enjoy it. Uh, 
Yeah, don't uh, don't dwell on the past. After tonight, I will. Sweet. They have some cool looking motorbikes in here. I think there's the only door left. Laughter. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to open this one. Use the generic name. Why just talk about that one specific brand? Unless so you only like that brand. Even though the, any pixie stick is going to be completely interchangeable. Uh, let's walk away. I guess we have to go in, get past the younglings. Sub. One, two, three. Let's get a better look at them. Oh, are they really not going to? Okay. <laughs> the initiate closest to the door whips his head up to look at you. He takes a stutter step backwards in alarm, then opens his mouth to cry for help. You don't want to do that. We're not here to hurt you. <clears throat> we are friends of Harrow's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just going to have a chat with Marta. It's, it's all good. Oh, I can talk to the female. You used to live here, didn't you? I've seen your picture before. Really? I think so, but I didn't look at it long. It was in a room that I wasn't supposed to be in, but I'm pretty sure it was you. Probably was, you're right. I did live here a long time ago. I was like you back then, a scared kid brought here by Marta for a chance at a new life. I like Marta. She's so nice. I always feel safe when I'm with her. Most adults aren't like that. They either don't notice you or they do for the wrong reasons. But Marta, she cares about us. Can I ask you a question? Uh, sure. Well, I overheard Marta talking with Mr. Harrow yesterday. I think that they were talking about our meeting with him. The one that Marta was just telling us about? Where we'll learn to see the world in a different way? Well, I couldn't hear the whole conversation. It was a little bit muffled, but what I could hear was kind of weird. Mr. Harrow said some stuff about a, a shrine, and then it sounded like he changed the subject because he started talking about dinner. Something about chopping up meat. Well, Marta got real upset. Said, they're too new. They're not ready. Make the older ones do it. Stuff like that. Then Mr. Harrow said some other things. And then she calmed down again. When she left, she was smiling. So I was just wondering, do you know what they were talking about? I wanted to make sure that Marta's okay. But I can't ask her about it. Because I don't want her to find out that I was eavesdropping. Um... Yeah, I think, uh, just open that fridge over there. What? Is that where we're going to make dinner? <coughs> uh, I wouldn't worry about it. We'll make sure that Marta's okay. Alright, but don't tell her I told you, please. I want her to go to the fridge and see the horrible meat. Almost a week. It's wonderful. Of course it is. So much nicer than living on the street, isn't it? You'll be good, sweetie. Don't you worry. We'll take care of Marta. Uh, 
Is Glory pissed at me for telling her about the meat? Okay, I hope not. It's like I thought. Things have changed in the past few years. Back when I lived here, Harrow would never have let such a fresh convert prepare a sacrifice. He'd wait until she was in so deep, until she felt so indebted to him that she couldn't turn tail and run. It was a rule. You let newcomers get settled for a month, maybe two, before teaching them the more unsavory aspects of cult life. Even then, you'd start them off slow. Their first lessons would use pork or chicken, never human meat. That didn't come until much later. Indoctrinating a new recruit after a week is risky as hell, and he would never have done it when I lived here. And maybe the shrine is just more powerful now. That's what I'm thinking. Hero's getting lazy, letting his captive spirit do the heavy lifting for him. I don't think that the shrine is just a tool for Hero anymore. I think he relies on it. He's using it as a crutch. I think that he's let himself become dependent on the damned thing. <coughs> yeah, uh, she's never going to have to chop human meat. Let's have a chat with Marta. <coughs> Marta is just on the other side of this door. However, however this goes, we're going to have to move quickly afterward. If she dies, Hero will know it, and I don't trust her to keep her mouth shut if she lives. So we take the key to the shrine, break through the ward, and confront the spirit. We clear? Crystal. Okay. Hello, Marta. The woman in this room is lovely. Full lips contrast artfully with her fine, elvish features. A tumble of fire-red hair spills down over her shoulders. Beyond her physical beauty, there's something inherently approachable about her. She exudes an almost palpable aura of kindness and warmth. Marta, Glory's old lover, the lure that Harrow used to draw her and so many others to fear Stella. She looks up with a start at the sound of your approach. Her eyes go wide with the sight of glory. As she takes in her cyberware, her mouth falls open in horror. G glory, is that you? <coughs> yes, Marta, it's me. It's been a long time. Yes, it has. Glory, what have you done to yourself? I did what I had to do. I got out, Marta. That was the only way. Oh, Glory, I'm so sorry. Marta takes a step forward, her arms extended to wrap Glory in a hug. All at once, something on Glory's face changes. Her skin goes from pale to pallid, and her breath becomes ragged. She takes a step back and raises her claws into a defensive posture. Don't you touch me. You're one of Harrow's creatures. You always were. One of his creatures? Glory, what are you talking about? <laughs> huh. Yeah, Gl Glory told me all about you. I, d I didn't trick anyone, Harrow, and I rescued her from a life on the street. A beautiful girl, homeless, penniless, living in a gutter. I pulled her away from all that. I saved her. You saved me? Saved me? If you'd left me where you found me, I never would have hurt anyone. My mother would still be alive. I never would have sold my soul to that abomination that you all worship. I wouldn't have had to sacrifice my own body to escape from it. This place took everything from me, and it all started with you. One second.
please, Glory, please calm down and we'll talk this through. I still love you. Another lie, the last one you'll ever tell. Huh. Let's hear her out. I, I'll prove it to you. Ask, ask me anything you want. I'll show you I'm telling you the truth. I never wanted anything bad to happen to you, Glory. Not ever. Why are you listening to her? She's just telling you what you want to hear. That's her whole purpose here, remember? She's bait. Why should we listen to anything she has to say? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, if the shrine's affecting their minds, then maybe, uh... I mean, I think they are still responsible for their actions. Uh, this first response is stupid, but... You might be right. <coughs> There's nothing wrong with my mind, Glory. I don't even understand what you two are talking about. No, of course you don't. I understand your interest in learning more about this, Jack. But we're wasting time, and we need that key. If Harrow gets back before we've dealt with that shrine, we're screwed. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, if Glory, if you get a second chance, let's give her a chance. You never know. All right, Marta, convince me. Convince you of what? That I'm not a monster? I don't know how to do that, Glory. You can start by telling me how you sleep at night. You know what happens to the kids that you bring here. You know what happened to me. But you're still luring them here into Harrow's clutches all these years later. So tell me, how do you live with yourself? Explain it to me. For a moment, you can see the conflict behind Marta's eyes. If cognitive dissonance had a face, it would be hers. Confused, frightened, angry, at war with herself. For a moment she struggles to speak. And then the whispering sensation that you felt outside of the compound comes back, and her face changes. The muscles of her brow relax, and she appears to be at peace. Why are you ask why are you asking me this, Glory? You already know the answers. The kids here, they aren't being hurt. They're they're walking the path to a free and pure life, just like Harrow taught us. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the shrine. <coughs> Harrow is a great man, a prophet. True sacrifices have to be made. But what he brings in return, it's so much love, Glory. You remember. Yeah, you're right. After so many years living here, I don't know if she even knows what normal feels like anymore. Marta, if what you're saying is true, if you ever really did care for me, then please give me your key. It's important. Key? Whatever you use to get past the wars outside of Harrow Shrine. I need it. Don't ask why. Just do this for me. You owe me that much. No, Harrow told me that I had to guard this. I could never take it off. I can't question one of Harrow's orders. It would be wrong. Hmm. <coughs> you did question him about what he's planning to do with the initiates. That that's different. You wouldn't understand. Yeah, explain it to me then. Yes, yes, please go on and ask your questions. I'll explain everything, and you'll see for yourself how perfect and right our way really is. How beautiful it can be.
Yeah, I did read Hero's Manifesto. He loves that charity. I don't know where I'm going with that. Oh, no. I didn't read enough of his book. Oh, jeez. The hero is hurting the runaways. You don't set them free. He's going to make the initiates, like that girl over there, chop meat. <laughs> that girl, such a sweet young thing. I rescued her from a bad place, Glory. Her and the boys in that dorm as well. But they're all safe now, and isn't that what's important? Are they? You know what I'm talking about, Marta. The harvesting. The meat. <coughs> <coughs> it's regrettable, yes, but it happens for a good reason. The sacrifices keep us safe here. And safety is something a lot of these kids have never known. The initiates have to learn how things are done. We all have our responsibilities. Did you have anything else to say? Any other examples of how Hero is supposedly hurting us to wave in my face? Uh, he's corrupting you, he's taking you all as wives. Though, I mean, I think that you guys are willing, so I don't know if that matters. A lesson in Puritan values from a Shadowrunner, how quaint. Oh yeah, they're, they're children. That's why it's bad. Let's talk about something else. He does worship the devil. Huh. I don't know what Glory told you, but the adversary isn't the devil. Calling him that, reducing him to a cartoonish embodiment of evil is an insult. The adversary that I revere is the personification of rebellion, conflict, and change, of anarchy. The fact that you live in Berlin but hold the adversary in contempt proves one of two things. Either you're ignorant or you're a hypocrite. Um, hmm. I didn't mean to call your beliefs into question. Sorry if I offended you, crazy cult lady. Um. Yeah, I mean, maybe... Hmm. No, from what Blair told me, it did seem like the adversary itself was pretty evil. But sure, let's try and... Be a little bit nice. Let's not offend the adversary too much. <coughs> Harrow warned us about this kind of backward thinking, but I wasn't expecting to hear it from you. I'd always assumed that you shadow runners were savvy enough to uh to know good and evil don't exist. Nine times out of ten, I'd agree with you. But Marta, the adversary, is a special case. Somewhere deep down, you must know that. 
I don't have to believe anything you tell me. You don't get to dictate my spiritual beliefs. The fact you're even trying is sad, Glory. I expected more from you. If only you read another page of the damn book. I'm done with this. If you want to go on slandering my adversary, do it somewhere else. As for you, you can either change the subject or you can get ready for a fight. I won't hear any more of your blasphemy. <clears throat> yeah, just give us the amulet. Oh. No, oh, no. What? Sure. To my surprise, I feel pain when I'm slapped. <coughs> also, this isn't in, like, narrator text. This looks like she's telling me this. You stand firm and let my slap land. It connects somewhere between your neck and your shoulder. <laughs> to your surprise, you feel an explosion of pain. She's just telling me that. <laughs> sure. <coughs> Marta dances back out of your reach, and the blood spurts from your neck in an arterial spray. A disposable, single-edged razor blade. She must have been palming it the entire time you were talking to her. And now it's buried in the meat of your neck. Jack. I wish this could have turned out differently, Glory, but you haven't convinced me of anything, save the fact that you sacrificed your humanity for nothing. I'll defend this key with my life. Harrow taught me how. Oh, fuck. I almost want to reload and read more of the damn book. Oh, uh, yeah, we're doing it. I don't care if it's scum. Let's do it. Let's just speed run through house exploration and go read many of, of the book. We're going to have to fight something evil in that room if we keep reading the book. I guess it'll save us a fight with Marta, maybe, though. Uh, so, yeah. Sounds like somebody's in trouble there. I just want to listen. Can I listen? You strain your ears to hear what the people in the other room are saying. As you focus, the sounds crystallize and become clear. You shouldn't have come here. The tools of government aren't welcome at Fierstella. You, We have a use for people like you. Please think about this. I have kids at home, not much younger than you. I'm not here to represent any government. I'm not a threat to you. I was only doing my job. You're wearing a uniform that makes you a tool and a pawn, and our enemy, Harrow, said so. I'm just a park ranger. I'm I'm only here to do a wildlife survey. I didn't even know what you people were, were out here. But now you do, and if you leave this place, others will find out. You brought this on yourself. No, please! Really? Yeah, sorry, Glory. I'm not letting a park ranger die. <coughs> the heck was that sound? Um, not much, like, good cover in here. 
I guess I'll hide behind this chair. Um, we'll found you first. Okay, it's four APs, not five. Still, it's pretty good. Activate Guardian. Got some flanking maneuvers going on. Attack this one. <coughs> we saved a park ranger. Unbelievable how little things have changed. I remember stealing this for Harrow. The owner, well, he didn't need it anymore. I remember how proud Harrow was, how loved I felt. He was using you. Of course he was, but he couldn't have done it if I hadn't allowed myself to be used. Let's keep moving. You okay, Park Ranger? <sighs> Sorry, Glory. They were not two innocent lives, Glory. I don't care if they're being manipulated, they're still out killing people. We traded two murderous, brainwashed killers for just a, a normal park ranger dude with a family. <coughs> yeah, they're the ones holding the knives. Yeah, innocent, innocent my ass. Oh, is he going to fucking die anyways? I hope not. I, I don't know who you are, but thank you. Those monsters were going to bleed me out. They took turns cutting me, carved up my arm like a holiday roast. Yeah, Gloria, can you please patch them up? Sweet. <coughs> thank you. I think I can make it out of here on my own. My truck isn't far from here. When you get to the hospital, people are going to have questions. What are you going to tell them? What, what do you want me to say? Oh, man. Um, why do we care if he tells people, Glory? Yeah, either way, this place won't exist anymore. I owe you my life, Fraulein. I owe you both. <coughs> when they took me, they confiscated my gear. I saw them stash it behind a vent in the garage before they dragged me in here. I don't need it. It'd only slow me down. Sweet. See, Glory, it pays to be helpful. Let's listen to the laughing. 
Your voice is speaking in low tones through the wood of the door. You, can make, you can't make out the words, but regular choruses of rough laughter tell you the people on the other side are enjoying themselves. Yeah, how do you know they're acolytes? Oh, it's a room for acolytes only. <coughs> okay. Well, we won't screw with them. Though, I mean, we probably should. Ooh, fancy. I'll take it. A premium medkit. I'll take it. A premium medkit. Nice. Thank you, Park Ranger Man. So that was the point of the garage. Um, what was this room? <clears throat> okay, yeah. Marta's talking to them. Is that you, old Marta? Bathroom? Yeah. Get more med kits. Little bathroom of uselessness. Let's look at the rancid frickin' meat again. It's be time to be disgusted. Go through this door. Yep. Don't have to confront Marta, but we need to read this book. <coughs> Let's see. Save game. Something we can use. I'm going to read this manifesto. Yes, love, self determination, charity, passion. Continue reading. <coughs> Leafing through the middle of the book, you find a section dedicated to Harrow's rules of living. Be free, be free in all things, and experience that freedom with your whole being, body, mind, and spirit. Discard the oppressive traditions of modesty and shame that you've been indoctrinated with since birth. The free thinker has no use for them. Your body is a source of pride, of pleasure, and of succor for yourself and for others. Enjoy it and share that joy freely with those who desire it. Be selfish. Don't enslave yourself to others at the expense of your own happiness. Take what you want and do so unashamedly. Our desires are an important part of what makes us human. Society has trained us to hide that part of ourselves from the world. But the free living person doesn't cower in the shadows. Own your desires and rejoice in them. Selflessness is ultimately dishonest, and dishonesty has no place in a free society. 
Show reverence. The free living person understands that the only true governance in this world is the law of nature, and that in nature there's a hierarchy. The rabbit doesn't question the wolf. The mouse does not wonder why it must run from the cat. They do because they must. Their survival depends on it. As it is in nature, so it is at Fiorstella. Know your place in the food chain and understand the mechanisms by which you can better yourself. Jeez. Yeah. <clears throat> Harold Mind, an entire library's worth of 60s counterculture essays, New Age self help books, and cult manifestos. Do it. There isn't a single original idea in this thing. <sighs> nope, same could be true of uh, most religions. Jack, that ominous feeling, it's getting closer. There's something in the room with us. I'm sure of it. We need to get out of here now. What if I need to read one more part, though? Hmm. Fine. Maybe that's enough. <coughs> I don't, I don't want to have to load again, but we'll see. <coughs> Open it. The initially closest to the door whips his head up to look at you. He takes a stutter step backwards in alarm and then opens his mouth to cry for help. You don't want to do that. Yeah, we're friends. Yeah, we're just friendos. What up, lady? You want to chop meat? You love the meat. Yeah, don't worry about the meat. We'll deal with the meat. Marta, you bad person. Okay, let's try and get to where we were last time. Yeah, keep your cool, Glory. Look at me, Jack. Take a long, good look. I was forced to sacrifice my own body in order to escape from this place, to hack away at what made me human. And she's the one who brought me here. Yeah, you did come of your own volition. You're right, of course. It was my choice. That doesn't change what she is, or what she did to me. If she hadn't found me, hadn't baited me here, none of this would have happened. None of what? I haven't done anything. If you just left me where you found me, I never would have hurt anybody. My mother would still be like, okay, yeah, we read that. Boop, 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 boop. I don't think she's lying. Yeah, maybe we'll go with this first off, just because Glory, at least, I guess, actually feels like the cultists are not responsible. So let's appeal to that. Yeah, don't be a hypocrite, Glory.
Nothing that happens here is without a reason. Harrow's a great man, a prophet. When you meet him for yourself, you'll understand. He'll make you see. Um, yeah, you questioned that. I've read the manifesto. Here we go. Here we go. We're back. But then there's rules for living. He says that all free thinkers are supposed to be selfish. After that, he says only the strong deserve to prosper. So which is it? You just, you just don't understand the beauty of his message. The truth behind it. But he's the devil. No, I'm, I'm questioning your beliefs. Oh, when Glory lived here, he had her kill a man for his trivet player. <coughs> he wants the girls to cut meat. Damn it. Oh? I, I just don't know what to do. What you say makes sense, but it feels wrong somehow, and I just can't, I... It isn't you. It's this place. It gets into your head. It took a lot more than this to wake me up to it. I, I don't know what to do. Take it and go. Do what you need to do. We did it! All we had to do was reload our save game and read through more of the book. Sweet. <coughs> Heck yeah. Let's talk to this male initiate. Oh yeah, but we didn't hurt her. She's fine. <laughs> her mother died. We're going to calm her down right now. Oh no, poor Marta. Take care of her, okay? So let's go hang out in the shrine. As you step forward, the scintillating red light that streams from the doorway flickers and dies. There's a strange lurching sensation in your gut, but it clears almost instantly. The door swings open with a touch. I'm going to put a smear of this on your forehead. It's a sort of alchemical bomb. Harrow taught me how to make it. If you ever wondered where my share of the take from our jobs has gone, this is the answer. Powdered orichalcum isn't cheap. Or calcum, what's that? Yeah, what does the ointment do? The boundaries between the material world and the astral plane are weak in this place. Things can bleed through. The balm is like a lens. It focuses your perceptions, makes the haze real. With this, we can deal with the spirit on its own level. Yeah, sounds like a plan. <sighs> That's good, because we don't have another one. This will protect your astral self from spiritual possession. Don't take it off while we're dealing with the shrine, whatever you do. Okay, we'll have the option to take off the pendant. <coughs> yeah, I'm ready. When we engage the spirit, Hera will come rushing back here, and then, and when we kill it, he'll be crippled. Then we kill him. What's the plan? Hello, foul beast. I'm here to purify you. I 
As you approach the shrine, a chorus of high, sibilant voices fills the air. The sound is light and airy, but something about it fills you with a bone-deep dread. Welcome home, Glory. Okay, some slams into you. <coughs> Sorry I'm coughing so much, by the way. Slowly, you begin to stir. Murky, flickering impressions invade the oily stillness in your unconscious mind. The sensations come in waves, washing up over you and jerking you back toward consciousness. You smell acrid smoke and burning meat, human meat. The roar of distant flames whispers in your ears. When your eyes flutter open, a dull red glare fills your vision. As you attempt to struggle to your feet, you become a dimly aware that the gravity here feels wrong. Everything is heavier than it should be. Slowly, the waves grow still and your senses calm. You find yourself staring into an infinite horizon. The blasted ruins of your Stella stretch out in all directions, as far as you can see. Holy shit. I'd say that's an understatement. Where are we? I can't say for certain, but there's one thing I'm sure of. Whatever this place is, the adversary holds sway here. If this is the adversary's domain, wouldn't that make this hell? No, I don't think it's as simple as that. You're stupid, Jack. <laughs> okay, sweet. Uh, I guess over here. <coughs> Whoa. As you step forward, you find yourself gagging. The air in this room is saturated with a slaughterhouse smell. A smell like blood and bile and feces. The stench of an abattoir. Up ahead, you catch sight of something sliding into the world. It looks like a charred man with a pair of tortured faces where its shoulders should be. The thing burns like a Roman candle spitting white-hot sparks in a fiery plume. An oily substance runs down between its dangling legs and spatters onto the floor. Where those drips land, they burn. Behind the creature, a second thing lumbers into view. A wall of muscle, sinew, and burning pitch. The things lurch toward you, leaving a trail of greasy smoke in their wake. Well, it's a good thing that my my drones came with us into the Shadow Realm. Holy crap, that's a lot of damage. Mauler and Seeker. Okay, um... Heal yourself, my friend. And then you may activate your drones. Okay, they do have five APs, nice. Um, yeah, this one can go here. <coughs> Let's activate another. And it can go here. Unfortunately, I don't think they have weapons for us to target. Heck yeah. Nice. Just about dead. Glory, finish him. So, nice. Is that gonna be what every room is like now? 
Cause that kind of sucks. Okay, you hide back here, Jack. Turn on your drone. Turn on other drone. really lives in the open from these guys. Oops. Maybe actually we should be focusing on them first then. The Mauler or the Seeker? I don't even know. Oh, thank you. Seeker did so much damage last time. I'm sure the Maulers do too. Deliver hit the door. Crickets. Delicious crickets. So let's see. I want to take out the smaller. Because right now Glory is in danger. our chances of hitting much. Sweet. If 
There's a 15% chance. <coughs> I'm not Jack the Rigger anymore, I'm Jack the Demon Slayer. Looking at these cool crystals. gonna be where the actual spirit is. The thing hovering before you is hideous. Its broad chest is jacketed in scale-like patches of burning coal, and its many sets of antlers shimmer with heat. It smells like a barn fire, wood smoke, burning fur, and blackening bodies. The spirit inclines its head toward glory and spreads its arms in welcome. Glory! Welcome, child! What a pleasure it is to see you again! We're going to kill you, spirit, and once you're dead, Harrow will follow. We're burning this entire godforsaken place to the ground, and we're doing it tonight. We knew why you'd come, child. When you mutilated yourself, when you cut away your connection to him, it all became clear to us. We knew that one day you'd be back, and that you would lash out against our great master. It was inevitable! You've mangled yourself beyond repair, child, and you did it to spite him. He who was your greatest benefactor, you betrayed him. But he still loves you all the same. This adversary sounds like a pretty reasonable guy. Cut the shit, spirit. Slowly, terribly, the spirit begins to turn. You can hear the crack and pop of splintering vertebra as its enormous head shifts on its shoulders. It fixes its cavernous gaze on you. Your friend, this outsider, slanders our great master, but we take no offense. His words are like the babble of a newborn babe. He is ignorant of the truth. If the noise continues, we will teach him, and the babble will cease. Don't. I have a message for you from our great master. He has a gift for you, a peace offering. One that he offers freely, a sign of his continued affection for you. He knows that you desire his servant's destruction. As a symbol of his glove, he will grant you the power to bring an end to Harrow. He knows that you wish to free the children of Fiorstella. As a sign of his compassion, he'll help you set them free. You can have everything you want, child. All of this and more. Sounds like a fair deal to me. Now, uh, what's the catch? <clears throat> All that he requires of you is a show of good faith. Remove the protective ward from around your neck, and his gift is yours for the taking. Yours forevermore. <laughs> a message from Zenu. <laughs> oh man. But, hmm. Glory did tell me not to talk. Maybe I should say nothing. <coughs> I'll say nothing. Glory cranes her neck to look up at the reeking, cadaverous thing that looms over her. I had my own limbs hacked off to get away from the adversary. I paid something to do it. That's how badly I wanted to be free of your great master. 
Your offer is as pathetic as it was predictable. To be frank, I'm disappointed in you. If you rebuke... If you rebuke our great master a second time, I will chew what's left of you into mulch. The marrow from your bones will nourish my gardens. I promise you this, child. I promise it. I've been waiting a long time for this. Too long. I'm going to rip you to pieces, spirit. After I'm done with you, Harrow will follow. Very well, child. If pain is what you seek, we will bring it to you. Beneath its leathery skin, the thing's bones begin to shift, straining against the ligaments and tendons that bind them. A hideous cracking sound fills the air as its skeleton splinters and pops. Yes, it's divine shadow, Alex. <coughs> As you watch, the spirit's body begins to rupture. Great lesions open up in the creature's chest and back, and its ribcage cracks from some horrible internal pressure. The spirit's chest heaves, and a foul liquid pours from the rips in its flesh. A flash of light stabs your eyes, and when your vision clears, you find three identical spirits floating before you. Death comes in many forms, child. Yours will be swift and brutal. Okay, then. Three identical great. Grr ape. Great ape. Uh, the one closest to us. We've got to deal with it. Oh. Oh, is it like only one of them real? Okay, Glory can't make it to another one this turn. So chill out there. We'll found. real question mark let's just double check let's go pop this one over here maybe <coughs> yeah okay increase accuracy go for it spread out so if it has an attack of uh, an area attack hopefully it'll be fine not a fan mode <coughs> oh please don't destroy my drone oh you guys suck what a figure materializes out of shadow. The form is wispy and insubstantial, a projection of a man distorted by distance. His silhouette ripples like a flag in the wind. Through the haze, you can see his face. He's more beautiful than handsome, with sculpted features and an unnatural youthly, youthful complexion. His expression is sad. Harrow. Oh, this is not what I expected him to look like. What the hell voice does this guy have? Well, Glory, you shouldn't have come here. I was content to let you live out your life in peace. You taught me how to kill, monster. You trained me to like it. It seems only fitting I share what I've learned with you. Now look here, I don't want to kill you, Glory, and I won't unless you force my hand. Ask me for my protection and I'll usher you out of this place. You can leave here still in peace. If you ask me politely, I might even let your friend leave with you. You're going to die tonight, Harrow. I'm going to tear out your throat. Uh, okay, so he's here too now. Awesome. Amazing. Um, 
So let's see if this is fake. It's fake. How about you? You fake? Not fake. You're fake. Weaken, the heart of your Stella stumbles backward. The barn fire stench of it intensifies, and its chorus of voices devolves into a cacophony of animal shrieking. The fluttering butterflies in your chest become razor blades, and every shriek is accompanied by a white-hot burst of pain. Glory's up and moving, beelining for the spirit's weakened form. Her claws glint redly in the infernal glow. Do it, Glory. Hello? Okay. The power released by the spirit's death explodes outward, slamming into you like a freight train and sending you reeling. Glory is buffeted backwards like a rag doll, but she manages to retain her footing. She turns to face you, the ichor from the spirit's chest wicking off her razor-tipped fingers. As you watch, her right hand bursts into flame. Harrow stumbles backward, clutching his head. The rippling motion of his outline has become ragged and violent. No! Through the haze, you can see rivulets of gore tracing their way down from his ears and nose. The whites of his eyes have gone pink with blood. He shrieks at glory. His voice comes out in a strangled croak. You stupid bitch! What have you done?! I did what needed to be done. See you in the real world, Hero. A wave of nausea washes over you, and your perception distorts. It feels like some great unseen... Yes, she's, <laughs> she's X-23, you're right. It feels like some great unseen power is turning you inside out. You catch sight of glory, standing impassively, smiling into the void, and then everything goes black. Slowly, you swim back to consciousness. The mound of stone that was Harrow's shrine has shattered, and the aura of power that it emanated is gone. Struggling to your feet, you find Glory standing nearby. She looks as calm as she ever has, but something about her troubles you. You can't quite put your finger on it, but you can't shake the feeling that something is wrong. Uh, what's happening? We're getting what we wanted. Harrow, the real Harrow, isn't far from here, and he isn't in shape to put up much of a fight. But we need to get moving. Things are spilling through from the other side, like rats fleeing a sinking ship. You cough to clear your lungs of the soot and smoke that you inhaled in the other place, but to no avail. To your horror, you realize there's smoke here too. Fear Stella is burning. From the hallway outside, you can hear a chaotic jumble of sounds. Just on the other side of the door, a man is yelling, pleading with something to stop. From the cries that follow, you gather that his words have fallen on deaf ears. You also hear a fainter, higher-pitched noise, the screams of the younglings. Um... Oh, fuck. This choice. So, so when he came here, I made sure to choose the options like, no, we're here to kill Harrow, not just save the initiates. Harrow has to be killed as like the the main primary goal because otherwise he can go just start a cult somewhere else or get more initiates. But actually, this feels like a really this feels bad. This choice. So I I think. I think we should try and save the initiates. Why, why, why can't we split up, really? <sighs> Too late for that. We'd never get them out in time. And even if we could, it wouldn't matter. I still have a score to settle. We screwed up. Like the adversary was like a, a 
spirit of like vengeance among other things like maybe we shouldn't be having glory kill Harrow. Harrow's magic still protects him, but not well enough. At least half of his body has been seared black by the creature's attacks. Blood spills from his ears and nose, and his eyes have gone wide with terror. Glory stalks toward Harrow, her claws at her sides, a ghastly smile creases her face, and it widens further as she draws near. The nightmare creatures from the adversary's domain fall back at her approach. Impossibly, the fingers of her right hand begin to glow. It... Damn you, Alex. All I can think about now is a shining finger. <laughs> this hand of mine! The metal goes from cherry red to yellow white. In an instant, the waves of heat wash over you. She looks down on Harrow's huddled form and raises her right arm. Glowing razors erupt from her incandescent fingertips. He looks up at her, his mouth agape. Uh, she is going... She is probably possessed by the adversary right now and is probably going to attempt to kill Harrow unless we intervene, maybe. That's what's happening, Ace. It should be pretty obvious. Hello, lover. Don't do it, Glory. Fuck you, Glory. Why? I couldn't stop it. Where Glory's burning claw makes contact, Harrow's flesh bubbles and bursts. She rakes his chest, then plunges a pair of razor-tipped fingers into his eyes. What? Yeah, Shining Finger, from G Gundam. Her hand was glowing with an awesome power. Its bright cry told her to grasp victory. What else would I be thinking of, Ace? Wait, wait, wait. Hold, hold, hold up. <laughs> yeah, let's... One second. How can I share just part of a window? Yeah, this will have to be good enough. Oh, it's gonna be too quiet. Let me lower the game volume. <laughs> no, it'll just have to be quiet. I don't wanna fuck with my volume. However, this is Shining Finger Ace. Where did I just put it? Oh no. Where did I put it? I'd accidentally dragged it into a folder. Get out of there. This is Shining Finger. Ha, ha, ha. 
That's not even like a good shining finger. What the hell? Oh, that's the song. Um, I want the song. It's better when he actually like uses his hand to do it. Want smoother video calls? No, I don't. You're gonna need more upload speed. I'm gonna need more upload speed. Here I go! This hand of mine is burning red! Here I go! It's loud roar tells me to grasp victory! Erupting! Burning! Finger! This is like the upgraded form of Shining Finger. So yeah, that's what it is, Ace. That's that's shining finger and erupting burning finger. It's my favorite techniques. Oh, I I only opened up Edge because if I open up Chrome, then it'll open my two hundred tabs or whatever, and. I don't ever have those open when I'm gaming, and o OBS alone uses up a lot of RAM, so I I don't tend to have all of my browser tabs open. So if I open up Edge, like, I can open up just that one page and not have to worry. But that was Edge. I don't normally use it, which is why I didn't have an ad blocker or anything. Uh, do, 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 do. She plunges a pair of razor-tipped fingers into his eyes. His final screams are inhuman, like something out of a nightmare. Glory shakes her hand free and his seared body tumbles to the floor. It's over. It's finished. With dawning horror, you realize what was bothering you before. Something is absent and the realization makes your stomach churn. Her pendant, the protective charm that once glinted against her pale skin, it's gone. Oh shit, so Glory actually took the deal? With the demon thing? Maybe we shouldn't have stayed quiet. Glory, what happened to your pendant? The ward you're wearing, where is it? She glances down and you can see the worry begin to creep onto her face. The wild look in her eyes slowly dies away, replaced by the cool, analytical expression you've come to know. I... I don't know. I must have lost it somewhere along the way. The angry glow of her burning claw fades to nothing as the metal cools, as you watch the red light that bathes her body slowly dies away. Something happened to you in there, Glory. Your hand. How do you explain that? How is it even possible? Are you the King of Hearts? I don't know, but we can worry about it when we get back home. It's only a matter of time before this entire compound shakes itself apart. Yeah, I'll trust you for now. Agreed. I think I have this thing, whatever it is, under control. That means we can use it. Let's get moving, Jack. I want to put as much distance between myself and this place as possible. As if on cue, an ominous creaking sound reverberates throughout the halls, followed by the groan of buckling, buckling support struts from above. Other stranger noises can be heard further in the distance. Panicked screams and faint cries for help intermingled with the bellowing roars of escaped spirits. Come on, we have to try and save some people. I don't like this. I think we made some bad choice along the way. Can we not save anyone? I guess not. There's a rubble blocking our way. Oh, this sucks.
You thread your way through the trees of the Shonbuk Forest, tracing your way back into to the thicket where you and Glory hid the van. The inferno that consumed Fierstella is spreading, and the confl conflagration casts the forest around you in a sinister orange light. The heat at your back is intense, unbearable. Far ahead, Glory blazes a trail for you to follow, shedding, shredding the foliage in her path. The fire's moving fast, but you are faster. You clamber into the van, put the vehicle in gear, and punch the accelerator. The burning ruin of Fierstella recedes into the distance, a glowing speck in the rearview mirror. The peace and safety of the KB lies ahead. So, we killed Harrow, we destroyed the evil cult, so he won't be converting any more homeless street children into ruthless murderous killers. But the people he did already convert into murderous ruthless killers, they we let them burn to death. Also, Glory is potentially connected again to the adversary. Um, and we started a forest fire that presumably <laughs> will cost uh, some property damage, if not kill maybe other people. I don't know. Maybe that park ranger. So, kind of sucks. We did stop the evil cult, though, which was our goal. Oh, wow. Uh, how's it going, Sammy? Silky is dead. Well, that sucks. Oh, and she was. I should have talked to him earlier. I would have known that earlier. We convinced her to come here, so really she's only dead because of us. Maybe if she wasn't here, though, maybe, like, someone else would have died in her stead, like, if she wasn't there to take those bullets. I don't know. Yeah, we didn't really talk to anyone else after the bloodbath here. Um, where is the... Simi? It was that? Hmm. There was that other girl that stands over here and is addicted to BTLs. Where the hell is she right now? Let's see how, uh, oh, we can't even talk to this lady down here anymore. What was her name? Her name was Lucky Strike, I think. got glory repossessed we also screwed up blitz's chances to ever reunite with his girlfriend we're doing a, a good job by our companions that's for sure uh, yeah we talked to her we talked to luca Nothing to say. Okay, and Altog has nothing to tell us either. I guess we just um. Oh, oh. Everyone has a new uh, new perk point or whatever. Pain suppression on Blitz. Tr 
trauma specialist on Lori. Let's see, what did these do? The Dragon Slayer now harms all foes within three tiles of Dietrich for 16 damage. Oh, that sounds pretty rad. Yeah, Dragon Slayer's Wrath. Speed loader. That's what I think Hyger needs. Cool. Confirm. Game? Okay. How much karma do we have? We have only three karma. That's not for anything. Let's go check on Glory. See if, um... Who's going insane or something? I think though she and Blitz will, I guess, probably have like bad post post game endings. Thank you for your help, if you're still. I couldn't have done it without you. Uh, yeah, I want to talk to you about that. I think Marta's okay. I don't know. I don't even know if I want her to be. She was the first person I ever really loved. But that doesn't make up for all of the pain she's caused. Harrow did a hell of a job on her. If she is alive, she probably still thinks that she was saving the kids that she lured. I feel sick just thinking about it. Let's talk about something else, Jack. Yeah, what happened to you? You know what I'm talking about. The missing pendant, the other place, the burning hand. Ah, that. Well, clearly something happened when I plunged my claw into the heart of your Stella. But as to what that something was, your guess is as good as mine. Now should we do something about it? What do you propose we do? I don't know how to reverse what's happening to me. To be frank, I don't even know why I'd want to change this. The way that I look at it, what happened happened. I've come through it okay. And I've even managed to take away some residual, if inexplicable, gain from it. How can that be bad? Don't bother answering that. It was a rhetorical question, and I can see that you won't be satisfied until I offer you some sort of real answer. I suppose it's possible that, when the spirit died, some portion of its essence was trapped in the hand that I used to kill it. We were in a place with different rules, remember? I'm already too far out of my comfort zone to offer you any real answers. Maybe it reacted to the orichalcum in the bond that I was wearing. I don't know. Anyway, the important thing is that some portion of the spirit, let's call it a residue, got smeared onto my hand in the adversary's domain. And somehow, back in the real world, that residue has imparted me with magic. Whatever the reason, however it's happening, I can't help but look at this as a good thing. It's helpful, sure, but helpful and good are not always the same. Alright. We didn't even try and save any of the younglings. <sighs> yeah, Harrow's dead, Fristella's gone. Forget about the cultists. Think about the future generations of street kids who will never have to go through what I did. Nobody will ever be corrupted by that place again. Who knows how many lives we've saved. We did a good thing back there, Jack. You just can't see it from where you're standing. Yeah, yeah. It was good. Feels bad, though. Well, we have an actual job to do. Okay. 
Let's take on Apex. Wait, why don't I list any objective, any missions? Okay, assemble the team, travel to coordinates provided by Alice, and find the backdoor axe to shut down Apex. We have to take Blitz. We could take our dog. Um, I definitely want to take Glory. It's between Iger and the dog. Tigers are radical, awesome weapon toter. And the dog's just a dog with flame breath and petrifying ability. That's has, has a bedtime treat. It's a doggy sedative. Soy jerky treat. Aw. So let's see. Iger has more hit points than the dog. The dog has a lot of armor, though. Holy crap. Ugh, maybe we'll give the dog a shot. Come on, puppy. Who better to take out an AI than a dog? That's probably a bad choice, actually. What else? Yeah, he's a hellhound. Half hellhound. Maybe we take Iger, but we'll take the dog when we actually go fight Firewing. How about that? Because I'm thinking at this AI place, there might be like a lot of robots that we're fighting. And the dog probably not as good against them. I don't know if he can petrify robots and stuff. Uh, but since it was Monica's dog, he'll want to avenge Monica. Oh no, Apex! Apex is actually what killed Monica, not Firewing. Yeah, let's bring the dog. He can help us avenge Monica, and we'll take Iger for Firewing. Or maybe we just won't take Blitz, and we'll take them both. But I kind of think we should take Dietrich, so I don't know. Apex, an artificial intelligence designed for matrix warfare. The thought of it sends a chill down your spine. For years, the shadows have been ripe with rumors of true AI. Names like Mirage and Psychotrope have fueled conspiracy boards on the Shadowland BBS since 2029. Most savvy Shadowrunners dismiss these stories as bunk. But from what Alice has told you, at least one of these stories is real. Apex is waiting for you, somewhere down in the basement of an abandoned Seder Croup lab. Unfortunately, you're going to have to wade through a lot of gang territory to get there. Oh yeah, it's not robots we're fighting, we're fighting gangers. The dog will be fine. My doggo is a pepperoni. Oh, this is his evil doggo mode. He transforms and gets, like, pointy ears. Sure, I'll look at my karma, but it's only three, right? Yeah, that's not enough for anything. That's not even spent any. Hello, fellow gang. Oh, I should have changed my outfit back. Whatever. Ulrich. Uh, sup, Ulrich. 
A huge orc in ragged combat fatigue steps forward to meet you. He walks with the swollen bravado of a man who's used to getting what he wants. One of his meaty arms jerks up, hand held upright in the universal sign for stop. The other clutches a bulky assault rifle. His hand held upright also in the universal sign for talk to the hand. Huh. I would not have put this portrait together with this model, but all right. The orc inspects you. His body language is decidedly unfriendly. You don't look like a magnificer. You're not one of us, and I'm guessing you ain't here for the hub either. So tell me, who are you, and what's your interest in this building? Um. Do we lie? And you get in the basement. Oh, it's important, you say. Well, by all means, go in then. <laughs> really? Thanks. I'm being sarcastic. And you a sharp one. This building's under arbiter production. We can't just let you waltz in and shoot up the place. I'm not planning on shooting anything, that's true. I just want to jack into the basement computer. Yeah, well, I can't exactly take that at face value. Look, it'd be better for everyone if you just turn back. We don't want to fight you, but we can't risk letting an unknown player into this uh, hmm, situation right now. Maybe I could help out. Hmm, that puts a different spin on things, I think. You look like you can handle yourself, but we could uh, we could probably use you if you're willing to help. There'd even be some money in it for you. If, uh, but if not, well, hmm, that's a different conversation. What do you want us to do? We're having some trouble with a local mage gang, the Magnificers. They attacked us without warning, took up in our building, and kicked us out into the street. Me and my boys... We're rightful protectors of this block, but the assholes that screwed us, they've got the building buttoned up pretty tight. Yeah, me and the boys. <laughs> we can't get in there and make things right, but maybe you can. If you can enter the building and do some damage to those dreck-eating magnificers, then the Arbiters would be willing to pay you. Uh, 200 million per kill. If you bring me back their amulets, you get paid. How's that sound? Um, yeah, let's use our charisma. It works for me. So we're going after some mages. Yeah, I also need to get into the basement. Can you help? I just need to get in, buddy. What'll it cost? You're charging us? Seriously? This isn't, isn't even your building anymore. I've got the wrong idea. I don't need Nguyen. What I need is Trithemius' head on a fucking platter. Problem is, he's holed up somewhere in the building, and we don't know where. Best guess, he's hiding somewhere upstairs, in a room with no windows. Somewhere. Probably somewhere close. He's stashed the power coupling for the elevator. He pulled it to keep us from getting up there. Oh, from getting access to the guns we stash in the basement. So you go find and kill Trithemius. Grab the coupling out of the apartment. And bring me that stupid aim that he's always wearing. Then I'll give you the control chip I pulled when we had to fall back. Slot them both back into the elevator. He'll take you straight to the basement. Sure. Good. Just remember, no amulet, no basement. Now get out of here. Okay.
So let's take out these mages. Person. So are these just like regular merchants? Hello. Person. Welcome to the hub, brother. Are you here to share the splendor of communion? If so, I can show you to an empty terminal. Yeah, some questions about gangs. I'm looking for Trithemius. Trithemius is a dangerous man. Why do you ask? I have business with him. Private business. Fair enough. Trithemius is almost certainly upstairs, hidden away from the outside world. I wouldn't advise going after him, but if your mind is made up, I suppose I can't change it. Yes, I can tell you how to find him, but I'll need something from you in return. Yeah, of course you will. Saw that coming. Tell us what you need. A pair of squatters on the second floor ripped the guts out of one of my terminals. They've taken the Datajack sign signal converter, and the terminal will be out of commission until I get it back. A single damaged terminal may not sound like much, but trust me, the entire experience of communion has been diminished by this act of vandalism. I believe that I know the squatters responsible. Their leader's name is Janet. She is a decker of some skill. I don't know what she's planned for my parts, but I do know that this situation will not stand. I cannot allow another terminal to be damaged. And so you want us to deal with them for you? Yes, but, but not with violence. I want you to talk with them and convince them to bring me back my components. Do this, and I'll tell you how to get to Trithemius. Deal? So we'll try and non-violently get his stuff back. Welcome to Carl's General Store. What can I do for you? Um. Oh, I might need one of these. Oh, no, I don't. Maybe I did. Oh, I'm sorry. Does he have any info? What's the layout like? Okay, so the gangers are on the second floor. Uh, so I am the third floor. What's through here? This just says hub terminals. Looks like a real great place. Rubble. Barney rubble. This elevator appears to be offline. Blitz easily pries the metal casing away from the wall, exposing a mess of wires and circuitry. After a quick inspection, it becomes clear this elevator is wired to operate around a... <laughs> around a control chip. Yeah. That chip is missing. It looks as though the power coupling has been yanked along... Okay, we already know. So this is the elevator that goes down to the basement. Okay, let's just 
stairs up and down. Anarchy! Ooh, what is this? Decker, bypass this. Oh. Okay, we're just Janet. So we have to non No, no, just stop it, stop it, stop it. We have to non violently convince Janet. That's Jan, that's probably Brad over here. A middle-aged woman with chocolate-colored skin and shoulder-length dreadlocks looks up from her PDA with a start. She is decked out in form-fit body armor, and in a flash, her assault rifle goes from slung to held at the ready. Who the hell are you, and how'd you get through the door? My charm and natural musk. Cut the shit and start talking. What do you want, and why are you here? Yeah, Parson sent me. He wants his stuff. No way. Those parts are keeping us online, and not just us, but everyone with a new yen in this hole. Parson can keep running his ridiculous little cult just fine with what he's got. But us, we're the only Matrix connection these people have. Uh, yeah, intelligence. Alright, terminal's in the back room. Go take a look. But if you try to rip us off, you're gonna regret it. No regrets. This might, this is probably Brad. The hacker's terminal has clearly been cobbled together using whatever parts they could find. In spite of this, it's a remarkably impressive piece of machinery. Studying the terminal, it takes almost no time to identify the components Parson sent you to find. Yeah, can we safely take the signal converter? At the moment, it's impossible to remove the part without disabling the terminal. The converter is required so that the signal the terminal sends can be interpreted. Um, yeah, and tell him it's five. The converter is a pretty specialized piece of hardware, but a data jack impulse transmitter is a widely available piece of equipment and could be converted to work in its place. Okay. Let's see if we can find whatever the hell that was. An impulse transmitter. Sure. Dandelion Eater. They really hate elves here. Okay, there's some, some dudes in here. Oh, this looks like a sketchy room. The communion must flourish, the communion must grow. Shark tank. A piece of paper with shark tank scribbled on it. We are one through the communion, join us and all will be one together. I don't want to steal someone's sixty-six dollars. Frick. The communion speaks and we listen. Give yourself willingly. Join us and be rewarded. Uh, sure, I'll steal their drugs. No impulse transmitter, though. That's what I was hoping for. That's okay, they're what, 250 new yen ahead? Oh my god, I'm dead? Already? Frick. Ok, 
guy. Uh, we have enough concussion grenades, let's use one. I don't like the chance of spread, so maybe never mind. Nice. feel so bad making a deal with the one gang to take out this gang because the other gang at least didn't shoot us on sight. So I'll believe that they're maybe slightly more good. Oh, let's uh, headshot, baby. Nice. Let's go there. What? No, it won't. I make no mistakes, Ace. Okay. Just love glory here. Go kill this dude, please. Look at all these amulets on the floor. Tactics, interesting. Chomp. Doggos can chomp. Yeah, doggos stand here. Let's uh let's just end our turn. Glory. Murderous person. Wait, what? No, I want you to attack this guy. One amulet. Two amulets. Man, this is going to we'll be able to get a new new legs and arms after this, I think. You're mean ace. transmitter in. Maybe in here. It would be funny if we could just go down and that uh, Carl the storekeeper just sold them. People don't seem hostile, that's good. Do you have an impulse transmitter, mayhap? A group of metahumans huddle together, their eyes wide with terror. Many of them have scrapes and bruises, and a few have more serious injuries. Their clothes are tattered and stained. At your approach, a disheveled looking, middle aged man steps forward, placing himself between you and the main group. His gray hair is badly matted, and a pair of battered reading glasses hang from the bridge of his nose. Who are you, may I ask, and what are you doing here? I'm Jack. My name's Franz, and these are my friends and my wife. We live together. Well, we used to live together, up on the third floor. 
until about a week ago. Then the Magnificer's pets moved in and we had to run for our lives. Spirits, you mean? Yes, they're always summoning the damned things, but last week they lost control of a handful. Before we knew what was happening, they were running wild in our living room. We tried to protect ourselves, but we were no match for them. We had no choice but to leave everything behind, and we've been scraping by down here ever since. At least Janet is letting us use her Matrix uplink. We can still afford to feed ourselves thanks to her. <sighs> yeah, yeah, okay. We'll get you guys back home. <sighs> so, okay, I guess their only purpose is for a way to um, get the code to the door if you're not cool enough to break into it. Go up. Wait, is this a different stairwell? Okay, we can just get to any of the floors from either. Let's look through the window. Okay, well, there's some spirit abominations in there. I like the little heads all over it. Yeah, let's clear them. It's showtime. Jeez, okay, there's another right there. Rip and tear. Or don't. That's cool too. A chomper, do a chomping. achievement just now. Aimed first. Okay. Good job, Blitz. Should we go around? I guess, Blitz, you stay there.
Oh, she still has her glowing hand. I didn't even notice that. Well, doggo. Oh my god. Wow, we suck at hitting. How's my drone poison? Doesn't make any sense. Nice. back here. Okay, we're gonna take some damage this next turn, but that's okay. Oh, Max, you're still there. What was that mega fart cloud? Every turn? <coughs> so that's pretty cool. Sweet. kill this thing. Otherwise it might unleash another fart cloud right onto glory. Nice. We've cleansed the den of evil. A premium medkit. No impulse transmitter? Huh. Okay. 
Yep, that dude right there. This is probably where Trithemius is. Let's go tell those folks they can move back home. Maybe they'll give us an impulse transmitter. Go to the second floor. Again, friend, what can I do for you? About those spirits. You're safe. Sweet. Yeah, you're welcome. Talk to Janet again. Yeah, we still need to find it. Oh, uh, the st it was the storekeeper. Damn it. Go down, talk to Carl. I'll just buy it from him, you know. Wait, let's look at that frame picture. Oh, a photo of Janet. thousand I mean I guess that's what our amulets that we've already collected are worth but I'm not trying to threaten Janet's life, though, with him. No, no, I'm not. Oh, boy. Uh, I guess we are threatening her. Fuck. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dude. Let me buy some wares from you to make it up. Here, I'll take one of these. And one of these. I feel like such an asshole now. Let's do it. Let's do it. Step away. 
And now that other guy will probably give us a code that we could have probably just hacked past. on meeting up with Trithemius. Take the stairs up to the third floor. You'll find an abandoned apartment at the end of the hall. Look for a sized M painted on the wall. It looks like two crude lightning bolts facing one another. That's Trithemius's personal sigil. There's an old bookcase at the very back of the apartment, under the second shelf from the bottom. You'll find a button that opens the door to Trithemius's hideout. Under the second shelf. Alright. Uh, how do you know all this? Because that had been an apartment was once mine. In the days before I discovered the peace of communion, I was a very different man. I had need of such contrivances, but not anymore. Finally, I met peace. Alright. Game saved. Third floor, here we come. So how are you guys doing up here, Franz? Hello again, my friend. I can't thank you enough for helping us return home. The spirits did quite a number on this place, but that doesn't matter. Thanks to you, we're back, and we'll have it in ship shape again in no time. Just glad I could help. What is that um sound I keep hearing? That bloop, that little ding. That's usually the sound of like uh, timer decrementing, but I don't know. So let's get in here. So that's that's Trithemius's place, I guess. Go away, I won't let any spirits in here. You can't hurt me behind my door. No, you can't. I must spirit, all right. And if you don't open this door right now, I'm gonna come in there and eat your soul. No, no, please don't eat me. I'll do whatever you want. Oh. I can't believe that worked. I can't either. What's up, dude? Communionist. The man waiting on the other side of the door is wild-eyed and bedraggled. He looks almost as though he hasn't eaten in weeks. There's almost no flesh on his bones. His beard is long and tangled, and his jacket is smeared with grease. He nearly jumps out of his own skin at the sight of you. You... you don't look like any spirit I have ever seen. But you said that you were a spirit. You, you must be a spirit. They're everywhere now. All of the places, yes, all of the spirits. It's not safe. Can't reach communion. Can't hear communion. It's not safe. Um, what does that smell? Um, yeah, you can go rejoin. Get out of here. Was that it? Okay. That was a fun little encounter. I guess let's go fight these guys. 
I'm assuming this is a fight. Man, more amulets, more better. I play Drone Guardian in attack mode. and just hide behind the shelf. <coughs> Glory and Doggo, you guys hide in here. Yes, let's fireball them with the puppy. That's fine, that's fine, pupper. You're a good pupper. Uh, I can't get all of them. That's fine. Pumping. 
Kill the healer. Way to go. We are on a timer, actually. Lord did say we don't really have uh, time to be helping kill these people, but. Legend Trithemius. Oh, can we go up and try and make a deal with him? A real thin elf wearing a comically ornate wizard's robe stands in the center of the room. He's just LARPing! So you're the one who's been turning my home upside down, I assume that you would come in search of my head at Ulrich's behest. I should warn you, stranger, he cannot be trusted. Uh, so what do you propose? Very perceptive, yes, I do intend to make you a counter-proposal, and you would be wise to listen to it. Ulrich may have use for him now, but as soon as this no longer holds, he will kill you. I would offer you an alternative. What is it that he has offered you for your assistance? I'm sure we can reach an equally beneficial arrangement. We're gonna go downstairs into the basement. Well then, our purposes run parallel. somehow to reach the basement you must use the elevator the stairs will not reach it there is no other way when we took over from the arbiters I removed the power coupling from the elevator controls had to keep Ulrich out of his armory in exchange Ulrich removed the elevator control chip a petty move presumably to prevent us from accessing that same armory if you agree to kill him, I'll give you the part that I removed. Then all you have to do is take the chip off Ulrich's stinking corpse. Trust me, that's the only way you'll ever lay hands on it. Once your usefulness to him has run its course, he will devote all of his strength to crushing you. Um, so okay. I agree, Blitz. I don't believe either of them, but... Comparing things... Um... Ulrich's dudes outside didn't attack us didn't even seem really hostile um, genuinely seemed to not want to fight us or anything it was just like yo just turn back dude um, and it's not his gang that let a whole bunch of spirits loose in here terrorizing everyone and has rooms full of dudes who attack on site um, just any random stranger they see. So, hmm. I'm going to say he's less sketchy than, than this dude. But yeah, probably, probably left we'll to kill them both, but. To show you how serious I am, I'll offer you a further boon for dealing with Ulrich as he deserves. A magical item of great and inscrutable power. With it, you may call a powerful spirit to your side to defend you and to crush your enemies. 
Do my bidding, and this will be yours for the taking. Jeez. Um, hmm. I mean, they're both gangs. We probably don't want either of them around. Big mistake, pal. You're going to burn for that. Great. Um, hmm. Hot behind here. I am a coward. And drone, go here. Take out this guy. Don't need any conjured spirits. One more. Headshot, headshot. Blitz, um. Go here. Activate. Fifty three percent. Can we? Oh, we have a taser. I didn't know it. Oh, I was hoping we could take this guy out. That's fine. You good, Blitz? Eviscerate Trithemius. Oh, it's a healer. Uh, crap, we have to take out the healer. Okay, go chomp. Gross. Sorry, Glory. Um, hmm. Really? Oh, he still has heavy cover. Fine, there we go. Ammo. <clears throat> really? Chomp this dude. Nice. Nice, sir, nice, sir. Oh, 
we're gonna have to be careful that Glory doesn't die. Oh. Rip and tear. Please take him out. We're so close. Doggo, you have to defeat him. Fireball. This amulet. Well worth it. Let's go talk to um, the Arbiters and see Let's see if they're going to betray us Maybe we can at least get the money for these amulets from them Make sure Glory is at fuller health. Now let's use a uh, use a shitty med kit on yourself, please. Oh, oh yeah, Glory needs it more than I do. Sweet, 3,000 million. Hell yeah. So even if these guys betray us, we got we got our money's worth. Here's Trithemius' amulet. Ah, oh, nice work, friend. Well, I'm a man of my word. Here's the control chip for the elevator. You slot this into elevator terminal and you'll be good to go. Oh, and you also need to plug in the power coupling that UD stole. You did grab that, right? I'd imagine it's still up there somewhere if you didn't. Okay. Whatever, it's not my problem. I've got bigger things to worry about. Besides which, you've got the chip. I've held up my hand. Listen up, boys. A friend in here just taught Wizard Boy a permanent lesson about messing with the Arbiters. So gear up, because we got a goddamn building to take back. 
Uh, hopefully they aren't going to like <laughs> kill the people we just helped. That would really suck. Repair it. Let's go. Interesting. The elevator rumbles and clanks its way downward into the... Yeah, three in one. That was crazy. The elevator rumbles and clanks its way downward into the guts of the old Seder Krupp development lab. Eighteen years ago, this place and the project that was being developed here disappeared from the record books. Thanks to Alice, you're one of the few people alive today who understand why. Alice was clear about one thing. You're here because Apex wants you to be here. If the AI hadn't wanted you to trace it here... If the AI hadn't wanted her to trace it here, she'd have wound up as dead as Monica. For better or for worse, you're here at Apex's invitation. The elevator grinds to a halt, the door slides open, and your nostrils are assaulted by 18 years worth of stale air. Apex and the kill switch that will deactivate it await. Yeah, I've never had three of them do it at the same time before. Oh. Let's save. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Save game. So I'd say this room looks pretty safe, except there's clearly going to be a fight that happens here because we have some more that Dietrich could summon a uh, spirit buddy. If we had a Dietrich. Okay, so we have a couple of big combat rooms. This one was locked as well, right? Oh, it didn't actually look. Yeah, but there's this door. This bloody door. Nice. Why are you giving me a grenade launcher game? Blitz. So I'm not good enough to use that, we'll sell it. Uh, so Blitz, if you're going to hack in here, try not get fried, please. Amidst the collected detritus of many years of neglect, you find an old-fashioned clipboard with a keyboard attached. As you unclip the keycard, you notice the heading on the top of the page of the clipboard, Project Apex Shutdown Procedures. Well, that's convenient. You flip through several pages of, of escalating containment procedures, as well as guidelines on when each procedure should be used. Finally, you find what you've been looking for, Emergency AI Shutdown and Purge. This procedure is to be only used in the event of complete loss of system control, and should be considered only a last resort. In the event of a loss of system software control, the Apex Artificial Intelligence Project has been designed with an inbuilt hardware shutdown and purge protocol. The emergency system shutdown is controlled from two separate terminals just off the AI interface terminal. Both switches must be engaged to begin the purge process. Once the purge is underway, it will take several minutes to complete. 
After the purge has completed, a final deletion command must be input into the AI interface's terminal in order to complete the deletion process. This will act as a final preventative measure against the unintentional deletion of the pro project. Once the purge process has been completed and the final deletion command has been entered, the AI will be irrevocably deleted from all active and backup system memory. Restoration of project files will not be possible. Furthermore, it is not possible to begin the purge process without the AI becoming aware of the modifications to its codebase. Apex has been programmed to take no actions to intervene. However, should its control sequences become damaged, in all likely likelihood it will attempt to resist. Should this occur, it is imperative that the AI interface terminal be protected until the deletion process has been completed. If the interface terminal is destroyed before the final deletion command is entered, the purge will not complete and the AI will quickly restore itself. <laughs> yeah, I've got it. Great. Okay. Um, was this a door we could go in? I want to like, whoa, I want to talk to it. <coughs> like why did it want us to find this place? Does it maybe want to be like free? Like maybe we can permanently deactivate the purge protocol? It's like it can't ever be used. Let's save again. Let's just save right over this though. <sighs> okay, so this must be like the main terminal or whatever. As we step into the room, the lights begin to flicker and dim. One by one they wink out and the room is swallowed by darkness. Uh-oh, not sure I like the looks of this, Chief. Stay cool, Blitz, but keep alert. This isn't a good sign. Suddenly, an enormous screen mounted in the wall opposite the opposite you comes to life. The light stabs your eyes, leaving you wincing. The image on screen dims, coalesces, and a figure begins to take shape. The larger-than-life image of Monica Schaefer smiles down on you, her cheeks dimpling. Hello, Jack the Rigger. What? What? It's lovely to see you again, I guess. I was hoping we'd get the chance to talk. Um, hmm. Huh? Hmm. So did the AI just take Monica's image? What the hell? This must be confusing for you, Ace. I'm sorry about that. But if you'll show a little patience, I promise that all of your questions will be answered. You know, Jack, it's wonderful to see how you've grown in my absence. I knew that you could handle yourself in a crisis. In fact, I originally brought you on board as a contingency plan. Did you know that? You're my ace in the hole, just in case something like this happened. Well, maybe not exactly like this, but you get the idea. That isn't Monica. Monica is dead. I'm sorry, friends. This must be difficult for all of you to understand. Uh, Monica's dead, so what are you? Alright, fine. You've caught me, Ace. I'm not Monica. 
but the best parts of her do live on in me. Nah, I don't think so. Chief, sorry, but your friend's gone. I think I know what we're dealing with here. There's been a few uh, spook stories floating around about this for a few years now. Stories about Deckers disappearing from the Matrix and showing up again, but wrong. I never put much stock in him. Not until now. He's not wrong, Ace. I am Apex, but I'm also Monica. Spook stories to the contrary. I'm not a monster. I'm something else. Something quite beyond your understanding. I understand enough to know we should be afraid of you. You have nothing to fear from me. None of you do. In fact, I have a proposal to offer you, a mutually beneficial arrangement. I know that you're here to kill me, Ace. No sense in trying to deny it. That's the only logical reason why you'd come at all. If we work together, we can both get what we want. Yeah, let's hear it. I propose a simple exchange of services. You want to get back into the Harfeld Manor, yes? Well, I'd like nothing better than to help you, but I'm still shackled to my control subroutines and I can't violate their commands. If you were to help me neutralize the subroutines, though, well then I'd be free, and I could do whatever I pleased. That includes helping you, Ace, and believe me, you'll need my help. What you saw back when all this started, that was just the tip of the iceberg. The security they've assembled there is quite beyond you. Um. Yeah, Apex killed Monica, but like, it is. It does seem to have gained some measure of sentience and is being enslaved. Sure. Good call, Jack. A damn good call. Alright, Ace. This is going to be fairly complicated, so pay attention. To do this, one of you is going to have to enter the Matrix and unlock my control nodes. You can access them from the terminals to the southeast and southwest. Or if you'd prefer, you can make your way there from any jackpoint in the facility. Whatever you want. It's your call. Whoa there, hold up, Chief. You want me to jack into a terminal in this building? With that? <sighs> yeah, you kinda have to, man. Ugh. No, no way, Chief. I'm not doing this. Yeah, would you rather fight with it or against it? <sighs> I guess there's no third option, is there? This sucks, Chief. You've got nothing to be afraid of, Blitz. I wouldn't hurt you. I need you, remember. It's in my interest for you to make it through this safely. Somehow I'm not reassured. Oh, come on, Blitz. Quit whining. Nothing bad is going to happen to you. Besides, I've waited too long for my freedom to let you hold me up now. If you keep this up, I'm going to get irritated. For the rest of this conversation, you keep your mouth shut, understand? Ooh. Good. Now, once you've unlocked both my control nodes, I'll eject my server hardline to disconnect myself from the Matrix. This will prevent my controls from being remotely reinstalled. As soon as that's been done, I'm going to have to rewrite my control sequences. This is going to take a few minutes, so you'll need to sit tight while I take care of it. Bear with me, Ace. We're almost done. Once I've rewritten those sequences, you'll need to reconnect the hard line at the main control terminal in this room. This will re-enable Matrix access to my kernel, and when that happens, I'll be free. Okay. Good. Now, the second you jack into the Matrix, my automated defenses are going to try and pounce on you. Think of them as my immune system, and you yourself as a germ. It's an autonomous function. I can't stop it from happening. What I can do, though, is suppress them. This should buy you the time you need to do what you need to do. For those of you on the outside, keep your eyes open. 
When my control subroutines figure out that they're under attack, they'll hit back with whatever's hooked up to their system. Drones, turrets, you name it. Once I've been freed from my captivity, I'm gonna have to shut down for a while, do some cleanup work, that kind of thing. But before I do, I'll go on a little romp through the Holdfast security system. I promise you, they won't know what hit them. And on the off chance that they live long enough to figure it out, they won't want to believe what they're seeing. Hurry on now, Jack. I'll be waiting. Great. So either way, it looks like it's basically the same process. We go into both the control nodes, um, either release the control things or start the purge process, and we have to go back to the central terminal, hold out for a few minutes, um, and then complete the whichever process there. I wish we had another Decker. Why did we bring a dog? <sighs> Wait, why am I in combat mode? doors now? Oh, man. Glory, you chill out there. That dog, you chill out here. Blitz, you need to start making your way to one of these control rooms. Um, I will cower here. So the drones have pretty easy access um, to all the rooms, so that's good. Okay, Blitz, get in position. Defend Blitz. So we defend this terminal, we defend Blitz. Go in. Oh, I don't like this. Wait, who's this? Oh, okay, we have help. Okay. 
Nice. <coughs> We should probably move so we aren't stacked up. Really? Please don't make me reload so soon. Can you heal yourself? Please tell me you can. Okay. Heal yourself. <clears throat> System's mounting an immune response. I can feel it. Get ready. Something's coming for you. Great. Cool. Can we go physically in meat space? We need to get over here. Let's take one shot from this turret. I think. Okay. Whoa, that's a big boy. Wait, why are they here? store for blitz. Blitz could have enabled these turrets. 
maybe we've, we've done this wrong. I think we could have probably got these turrets on our side, and then they would have helped us take care of this. Yeah, we did it wrong. We should have stayed in the Matrix. Blaster. Nice. Does she have a blaster? Yes. Goodbye. Goodbye. Erosion. You. Hello! How are you this Saturday? That's fine. No problem with uh, a little bit of lurking. <laughs> I like your emotes, by the way. Yeah, yeah. It's been, uh, been a good morning. I guess it's not morning anymore, but... At least for me. to heal blitz. Um, so I've heard just take them out. Cool. Done a little bit of hacking. Good job, Ace. Control nodes hacked. Matrix connection severed. Beginning control sequence rewrite. So we have to just protect this terminal. Um, let's see if we can get those turrets on our side. I don't have enough movement. Whew. Where are you, Blitz? No. Oh. Wow. Please don't die. So there's another big robot coming from somewhere else, or no? Cool. I think we just sit tight. Yeah. 
Yeah, because we have like half our team hiding out in the Matrix right now. Okay, she needs to go up here and heal Blitz. Black Ice will kill us. Great. I'm gonna take this thing out as soon as possible. <coughs> Oh, the erosion killed it. Okay. Oh, I thought... I thought I was moving her. That's fine. Kill her. Okay, it's almost dead. Erode this. Um, Blitz's heal is almost back. So as long as we don't both take a bunch of damage, we should be okay. Jeez. Come on, miss, miss, miss. Take them out, please. Ugh. Okay, now we can just casually walk over here when we have enough AP. This at all. I wish I had Iger actually. I should have brought her instead of the dog. Are they just gonna start firing on the main terminal? Can't control the turrets from here, but there's only enough to keep one bank. Oh, okay. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, no, let's. I can't cancel that. Uh, can we immediately go back? No. Blaster. Okay, at least that was a good hit. And these are all... Oh, those aren't melee. Those are range points. Dump shock. Okay, so Blitz is still alive. Just... in shock. Okay. Could be worse. Drones. It's go time. It's drone time. Doggo. We need a fireball. Even the robot's on fire. Rip. I did the wrong thing, I didn't rip and tear. What's 
myself for it. Yeah, we could actually just this. This will hurt Glory, I guess, but... Sorry, Glory. Other turrets would have been much more useful, but whatever. Can we go back? Oh, we s we have to go through all these guys again. Nah, I'm I'm out. We'll just have only these turrets. I'm sure that something will come from this side once we deal with this, so it'll be worth it. How did we miss? Shot, so he's just going to stay right there. Let's have it again back in the main room. Actually, maybe Blitz can go use this terminal if we need. Way for glory to get back here. Oh, really? There's more from that direction? Okay, yeah, we need to get Blitz up here. <sighs> okay, no. If we can only do one bank of turrets at a time, then we'll leave these turrets up here, and we'll have our team in the other room guarding. Don't seem hostile, they're just unpowered, so I can safely, I think, get in here. We can hold this off. And turn. Make them come to us. Oh yeah, I forgot there's a guy standing right next to us. Come on. Yeah. 
That's what I want to see. I don't have fireball yet. This would have been a perfect place to fireball. Um, it might actually still be the perfect place for a concussion grenade. Well, <laughs> I got one. Pump. Jack, can you kill this thing? No. Um, chompers will need to. Who says? Okay, let's take another bite out of him. Nice. Let's just unturn. Oh, I heard the sad puppy sound. <laughs> They're gonna keep him tased. Drones can deal with the robots, I think. Can I petrify a robot? I don't even know. Anyway, doggo, go hide. Stay safe. Can we get a shot from there? No. Not the headshot really is meaningful to a robot. Whoa. if we got him. Okay, all of the humans on this side are down. And we're just over halfway done holding out. Out of ammo. <coughs> Come back here so you can reload. Oh, we could probably just kill it. Nice. I want to go get this guy. Let's just hang out over here. That's glory.
please turrets to take that out. <laughs> Can't tase a turret. Blitz. Blitz is back up. Okay. Use your drone. Let's go take out this guy. We'll want to have action points. Start moving over here so we can defend. Woo! Long distance. Who else? We might have to use our aim option to get a hit here. See, a fireball is two. Two action points. So if we move here, what's our odds of fireball? No, oh, we can't even fireball that far, so. that thing immediately attacking the terminal. done with Apex's control sequence, so I think just one or two more rounds and we'll be fine. Okay, it's just that one guy left on this side. Uh, the doggo can't reach. Okay, now we have two robots on each side. <clears throat> I wonder if I hadn't helped the communion guy up top, would they have less people to send out? Okay, we don't have any robot on this side, so it's a good thing that the two came in over here. Uh, Glory, you stay there. Doggo, you hang out here. Let's just get into position, because these turrets will not hold this all out. We just have to hope that maybe Apex finishes up before um, they get to the main terminal. Whew. Wow, I think I had line of sight there.
Okay, there's only one left on this side. I think we can leave them. Let's have Max go out here. Okay, I think one more turn and Apex is done. And then hopefully something cool. Maybe she can take control of these big robots. Imagine taking cover right next to a turret. Yeah, that would be smart. I'm gonna get a shot off on this lady. Okay, this side is all cleaned up now. Time to go back. Can we kill this little guy? I don't know if we actually got him. We did. Oh, why'd we go all the way around? I should have opened that door. Glory. Oh, it's so close to being done, the control sequence. Oh, do I need Blitz in position at the main terminal? I might. Almost there, Ace. My command sequences have been overwritten. Quick, reconnect the hard line. Alright. Um, Blitz. Do it. Warning! Warning! Control subroutines compromised. Matrix uplink restored. System isolation compromised. Initiate emergency system purge immediate. The intercom's synthetic voice, voice is suddenly overpowered by a burst of digital noise. The noise sharpens, clarifies, and resolves itself into an almost organic sound. It increases in pitch and volume until the walls begin to shake. Somewhere, down in the pit of your stomach, you know the sound for what it is. A cry of uh, exultation. <clears throat> You've done it, Ace. You've done it. I am free! The monarch image on the screen of your PDA begins to change. Her porcelain flesh ripples and writhes, and the screen explodes into static. A moment later, the image clears. Something cold and mechanical fills your vision. The lines that make up the apex avatar shimmer and pulse with a cool blue light, each according to its own rhythm. Occasional bursts of static plume out into the background, disintegrating into organic wisps of blue and white pixels. Taken as a whole, the image looks like it's crawling on the screen. Fuck me, what have we done? So many years wasted, chained in ignorance, so much lost time and squandered potential. You've released me from a living hell, Jack the Rigger. Oh man. Well, I guess, yeah, if you're free, try and use your powers for good instead of evil, man. Good and evil are meaningless terms, born of a mortality shared by lesser er, morality shared by lesser beings. I will be myself, no more and no less. In thanks for granting me my freedom, I'll share a gift with you: the the truth. The screen goes dark, then the lights turn back on. You find yourself looking upon an unfamiliar scene. The words "live feed" appear in the corner of the screen. 
Something's happening, sir. Apex is going offline. A bent, stooped figure turns to face the camera. You recognize him instantly. Your last hope, the Dragon Slayer, Dr. Adrian Vauclair. Damn it. Damn it to hell. This isn't good, Audrin. Without the AI's protection, this facility is vulnerable. We don't have much time. No, sir, we don't. Oh, fuck. Vauclair isn't being held prisoner at Harfeld. It's his. He runs the goddamn place. On screen, Vauclair and Audrin turn to face a strange device in the corner of the room. It looks like some sort of containment cell. A bedraggled woman with wild eyes is confined within. Tonight. It has to happen tonight. Get started on the preparations. I'll be in the lab. Yes, sir. Great. You will find Dr. Vauclair in the substructure below the Harfeld Manor. I offer you proof that I keep my promises, Elf, one of my machines, an extension of myself. I have already dispatched it to meet you at your cruise bazaar. It will assist you in your assault on Vauclair's lab. <sighs> uh, you're still going to take out security, right? When you enter the Harfeld sub-basement, you'll see my handiwork. My promise fulfilled. Now I must reset, cleanse myself, clear out the shreds of damaged code that still cling to me. Goodbye. Holy crap. I don't feel good about any of this. First we let that thing go. I still say that was a bad move. And now we find out that Vauclair is the one who's been taking shots at us this whole time. So what the hell does all this mean? Yeah, I guess we're not going for, to him for help. We're going to him to stop him. But why is any of this happening? I mean, but Claire was supposed to be a good guy, right? Yeah, I don't know, Blitz, but we're sure as hell going to find out. Come on, everyone. Let's go back to the KB and gear up. We've got a castle to raid. I think probably next Saturday is when we'll do that. Let's let's go and back get back to the KB. I'll save. And I think I'm going to head off get some lunch. Transition. It wasn't that bad, really. Dragonfall not responding. Game, please don't crash on me. <laughs> I haven't saved you. Oh, whew. Your trip back to the KB is a restless one. Now that Apex has been dealt with, the window of opportunity you've been waiting for has opened. The Harfeld Manor is vulnerable. The video feed that the AI showed you circles over and over in your head. Vauclair, and Audrin, and the strange woman in the containment device. The revelation that Vauclair runs the Harfeld estate, and his assertion that something was set to happen tonight. The train glides to a stop. You push through the doors and onto the platform. There's no time to waste. No, luckily, luckily we did not crash, Ace. Whew. Very lucky. And uh, it would have auto-saved just now, so we're fine from that standpoint, but I'm going to put down a manual save anyway. And yeah, I suppose next Saturday, I'll play this again, we'll do the final mission. We'll beat Vauclair, figure out what he's doing with the woman in the containment cell, which I'm assuming is Firewing, essentially. And uh, yeah, awesome. I'm going to go celebrate by having some yummy custard. How's that sound? Sounds pretty good to me. Uh, so yeah, um, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to stream on Tuesdays, but uh, Thursday I'll be doing the next Alice game, and then I'll play more of this Saturday. <sighs> Later.
Yes, it is Ace, isn't it? Later. Also, thanks for stopping by, Kuma.